Today's topic of discussion is abdominal swelling. The source is from Harrison and this content is for medical education purpose only. Causes of abdominal swelling can be remembered as six F's. So one is flatus, second one is fat, third is fetus, fourth is fluid, fifth is feces. And coming to the sixth one, it is the fatal growth of a neoplasm. Coming to the first one, flatus. So normally, the normal small intestine contains around 200 ml of gas, which is usually made up of nitrogen and oxygen, which is from swallowed air, and uh, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and methane, which are produced intraluminally from bacterial fermentation. Abdominal swelling may be the result of increased intestinal gas. Increased intestinal gas occurs in aerophagia, that is swallowing of air can result in increased amounts of oxygen and nitrogen in small intestine. It results from if you are in an urgency and you are having your food, so gulping of food can cause aerophagia and abdominal distension, chewing gum, smoking or a response to anxiety which can lead to repetitive belching. Increased intestinal gas due to bacterial metabolism of excess fermentable substances such as lactose and other oligosaccharides can also lead to increased production of hydrogen, carbon dioxide or methane. So before we dive into the topic, we should understand two terminologies. One is abdominal distension, second one is abdominal girth. So abdominal distension is an objective increase in the abdominal girth and is the result of lack of coordination between diaphragmatic contraction and anterior abdominal wall relaxation a response to an increase in intra-abdominal volume loads so if you see a normal individual and then the person with bloating bloating is nothing but build up of gas whereas distinction is an objective increase of the abdominal girth and uh, yeah bloating with distinction also there is an objective increase of abdominal girth so how do you measure abdominal girth? Abdominal girth is the measurement of distance around the abdomen at the level of umbilicus. Next, fat. Weight gain with an increase in abdominal fat can result in an increase in abdominal girth. Abdominal fat may be caused by an imbalance between caloric intake and energy expenditure. If you are consuming more calories and uh, spending less energy, uh, there is like increase in abdominal fat and uh, which is associated with a poor diet and sedentary lifestyle coming to excess abdominal fat has been associated with increased risk of insulin resistance and uh, impaired glucose tolerance type 2 diabetes mellitus and cardiovascular diseases there are also some respiratory diseases such as sleep apnea and uh, copd coming to the other f fetus Pregnancy usually results in increased abdominal girth. Typically, an increase in abdominal size is first noted at 12 to 4 we 14 weeks of gestation. Other F is feces. In severe constipation or intestinal obstruction, increased stool in colon leads to increased abdominal girth. The other F is fluid. Accumulation of fluid in abdominal cavity that is called as ascites often results in abdominal distension. We will discuss as a separate topic regarding ascites. The last F is fatal growth. Neoplasms, abscesses or cyst can grow to sizes that lead to increased abdominal girth. Enlargement of intra-abdominal organs, specifically liver or spleen or an abdominal aortic aneurysm can result in abdominal distinction. Bladder distinction also may result in abdominal swelling. So we'll further discuss regarding approach to patient with abdominal swelling. First important thing is history taking. So always patient should be questioned regarding symptoms of suggestive of malignancy that include weight loss, night sweats and anorexia. Inability to pass stool or flatus together with nausea or vomiting suggest bowel obstruction, severe constipation or an ileus. Increased belching and flatus may point toward aerophagia or increased intestinal production of gas. Patients should also be questioned about risk factors 
for or symptoms of chronic liver disease including excessive alcohol use and jaundice which suggest ascites patient should also be asked about symptoms of other medical conditions including heart failure and tuberculosis which may cause ascites so these are some important points in your history taking other than your uh, regular history you should always ask the patient regarding these points when abdominal pain does accompany swelling it is frequently the result of intra abdominal infection or peritonitis or pancreatitis mm. coming to physical examination abdominal examination should always begin with inspection you will completely expose the abdomen to look for scars and the position of umbilicus whether it is pushed upward or downward and uh, you will also look for the uh, skin change color change and everything physical exam uh, examination should include an assessment of signs of systemic disease that is presence of lymphadenopathy specifically left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy which is virtuous nod suggest metastatic abdominal malignancy inspection should always be done by standing on the right side of the patient coming to other signs kusmal sign which is elevation of jvp during inspiration and pericardial knock may be seen in patients with heart failure or constrictive pericarditis and other signs of chronic liver disease such as spider angiomas you can see in this image palmar erythema dilated superficial veins around umbilicus called as caput mediusae and gynecomastia suggest chronic liver disease coming to percussion abdominal swelling caused by intestinal gas can be differentiated from swelling caused by fluid or a solid mass by percussion always abdomen filled with gas is tympanic whereas abdomen containing a mass or fluid is dull on percussion absence of abdominal dullness however does not exclude ascites because minimum of 1500 ml of acetic fluid is required for detection of ascites on physical examination palpation of abdomen to assess for tenderness so always palpation of abdomen you should always stand towards right side of the patient uh, there are two ways of palpation one is superficial palpation and the second one is deep palpation always ask the patient where is tenderness if there is tenderness don't palpate from the, that area start from the opposite area and try to assess uh, all the areas and finally go to the area of tenderness and also it is useful to assess any mass or enlargement of spleen or liver or presence of nodular liver suggesting of cirrhosis or tumor coming to auscultation absence of bowel sounds or presence of high pitched localized bowel sounds points toward an ileus or intestinal obstruction umbilicus umbilical venous hum may suggest the presence of portal hypertension so auscultation these are some areas of auscultation of bruis this center area is for aorta you can see the renal artery auscult auscultate for bruis for renal arteries and iliac artery bui and femoral femoral artery bruis also remember pulsation of liver suggestive of uh, retrograde vascular flow from heart usually seen in right sided heart failure and particularly tricuspid regurgitation coming to imaging imaging abdominal x ray is usually used to detect dilated loops of bowel suggesting of intestinal obstruction or ileus abdominal ultrasound is very useful in cases of ascites it can detect as little as 100 ml of ascites and also can can be useful for finding out hepatosplenomegaly or a nodular liver or a mass coming to ct abdomen if malignancy or pancreatic disease is suspected we do ct ct scan of the abdomen sometimes we use contrast when necessary ct may also detect changes associated with advanced cirrhosis and portal hypertension this image from harrison the arrow mark shows the cirrhotic and nodular liver whereas this yellow arrow shows splenomegaly and uh, arrow head shows ascites coming to the lab investigations that have to be done serum albumin liver function test and ptnr are done to assess hepatic function 
CBC or CBP complete blood picture to evaluate presence of cytopenias serum amylase lipase for acute pancreatitis urine protein in suspicion of nephrotic syndrome thank you so much i hope you understood everything about abdominal swelling we'll discuss regarding ascites in the coming video thank you